All right, thank you, and welcome to the regularly scheduled Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Tonight is Monday, the 23rd of November, the last meeting before Thanksgiving, so. Go, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so first up on our agenda, we have a tax classification <laughs> hearing that we've got scheduled, so we have to open our hearing. We'll order at 634, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I could, I was just trying, I got part of that. Should we do it to a roll call? No, 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 we'll, we'll call the meeting, call the meeting to order at 634 and then- Yes, we'll okay, sorry. No worries. I couldn't hear, it was, the audio was a little, a little quiet. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so, um, and Teresa's on tonight, right? Yes. One of your, one of your last exciting appearances probably? No way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, we're going to have to open this um, classification hearing and then request a suspension because the accountant is not prepared with the figures for tonight's meeting. So we are hoping that he will be ready for the November 30th meeting. Okay. Um, if and I'm just thinking like in you know, a worst case, if he for some reason isn't ready, can we can we extend it one more time procedurally? Yes, they've actually changed the procedure. Um, every other year up until this year, you had to post it in the newspaper a week yeah. ahead. And okay. apparently they've suspended that this year, even though we did put it in the newspaper because I didn't know we didn't need to. So um, all we need to do is what we're doing right now, say that we need to suspend the hearing until such and such a date. Such so a date. at this point, we're suspending it till the 30th. Okay. And hopefully we don't have to do that again on the 30th. So I don't have to repost in the paper or anything like that. Okay. They've eliminated yeah. that whole requirement. I figured we may as well just double check on that. So that, that I can see that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that is good news because I was kind of stressed out on how we were gonna manage that, but um, we don't need right. to put it in the paper. So we don't have to worry about constantly updating it in the paper. That's good. That's one less thing to yeah. worry about. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's basically all we've got right now. We did have our um, classification hearing with the water district at six o'clock. So that is all set. And I double checked. It did not have to happen on the same day. They can be on independent days. I checked with Department of Revenue and they said that's absolutely fine. Um, so we have, they're set and I will be submitting their figures in the gateway system tomorrow so that that can start the approval process so we they may get approved first and that's fine and then when we have our numbers i can submit those after we have our hearing and then hopefully we get a quick turnaround so then i can do the tax extract and get that over to point so they can print the bills and we can get them out before the end of the year yeah. so it'll be a marathon effort <laughs> oh, thank you a lot of steps involved okay. And it's there is. That, yeah, and it's good that people hear those, which is nice. Yes. So thanks. Thanks for reviewing that. Um, okay. Okay. So we have a um, a motion to suspend the hearing until November thirtieth. I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Second. All right. All Second. those in favor. Oops. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep, all those in favor of suspending until the thirtieth, the tax classification hearing. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, was that Marianne? Did you want to say something? No, I just said I. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. And uh, I, I'd just like to thank you uh, for all your service and time, Teresa. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, I guess we'll see you back here next week, huh? We, yeah. <laughs> As my father used to say, God willing, and if the creek don't rise, I'll be that's, here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Perks are rising. Uh, well, you know, that's just a little bit of old timer wisdom, old time Sunderland resident wisdom. There you go. So. A little old timey stuff. All right. And, and thank you yeah. to the rest of the team for coming out tonight, too. So, okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, no thank you. All right. See you next week, guys. And uh, have a good Thanksgiving. Right. You too. You also. All right. So we'll be back for that next week. Um, next up is our minutes from last week. Motion. Second. A, second. All those in favor of the minutes from uh, September, excuse me, November 9th? 
Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. <laughs> and next up, we have a sewer connection request for 170 Old Amherst Road. Um, is there anything you want to pull up, Jeff, for that? Um, is Mr. West on the phone? We can we can bump it out if you want until he um we have the drawings to look at. Uh yeah, I can I can pull those up, but do you want to wait? Uh, he said he was gonna be here. I sent yeah, him. we can. What do you think? We'll push it ahead a little bit and take something else until uh, he hops on. We can do road closures and uh, appointing <laughs> the CPC planning board member. Yeah, we those should be pretty quick. All right. Can you um can you pull up the list of road closures there, Jeff? And we can read through those. This is something usually George does every uh, every year when his winter starts to arrive so that we close down some of the roads for clearing. It's probably usually good to read them. And we have posted those on the website, right? Or we're going to? Uh, I believe they have been posted to the website, yeah. OK. Are, are they up on your screen or no? No, I can, I can oh, still see the agenda. No, that's OK. Sorry. sorry. Um, hey, there yeah. we go. Okay. Yep, got them. Is, it, is Reservoir Road the last one where it says Reservoir Easterly? OK, Whitmore Cross. Uh, Whitmore Cross. OK, all right. All right, so this is from uh, George Emery, the highway superintendent. He's recommended closing the following roads for the winter, for the upcoming winter season. Cemetery Road from house number one on South Main Street driveway to Riverside Cemetery. Clark Mountain Road from house number two, easterly to Mount Toby. Cross Mountain Road from house number 28, northerly to Middle Mountain Road. Ferry Road westerly to the Connecticut River. Ferry Road to Williams property from Route 47 westerly to the Connecticut River. Gun Cross Road from Route 47 westerly to Falls Road. Gun Mountain Road from house number 23 easterly to North Mountain Road. Hubbard Hill Road from house number two easterly to the Leverett Line. Middle Mountain Road from house number 10 to Mount Toby. Mount Toby Tower Road from Reservation Road to the Fire Tower. North Mountain Road from the intersection of Claybrook Road northerly to Mount Toby, Reservation Road from House Number 40 easterly to Route 63, Reservoir Road from the Reservoir easterly to Mount Toby, Reservoir Road from the Reservoir easterly to the point of termination, and Whitmore Cross Road from Route 47 westerly to Falls Road. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that at all? Or? No? All right. Do we have a motion? Oh, good. Motion. Okay. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And next up, we have an appointment for Dana Roscoe to the Community Preservation Committee as the planning board rep. Motion. I have a second for Dana's appointment. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Gonna to go to a state of emergency, Mr. Chair? Yeah, I think so. Our COVID-19 update state of emergency. And I, I saw Laurie on the phone there and I see Caitlin on. Hi there. Hey, Hi. so how are we doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> Not so good. Yeah. Oh, see now, glass half full, empty, glass half full. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll get two sides of it then. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. Um, for yesterday, um, we had four more positive cases. Um, we had two positives on the 19th, one on the 18th, six on the 14th. Makes a total for the month from November 2nd till current of 19 cases seven cases alone in one residence yeah okay 
Oh, and then two close contact cases also within the same period. Okay. <clears throat> and do we know how many of those are tied to UMass at all? Have we got the, or if any? I do not know. I only know addresses, so okay. I don't know. All right. Yeah, if they're students or, or not. Okay. No. All right. Caitlin, do you? Well, and that's that's actually a problem. Um, our communication uh, coming out of UMass is uh, not, um, and it, it is not a, a, a negative reflection on UMass. What they're doing is um, their system, they're up, they're trying to gather they're doing contact tracing and then they're gathering all of their information and they're trying to upload it in a bundle okay. to Maven. And Maven is, I always try to repeat this in case anyone new watches this. Maven is the, it's an acronym for the, it's the state um, system, the computer system that holds any infectious disease in the state. It's the uh, a computer system just for uh, classification of infectious diseases. And um, it, it's where all the data goes to it's be a analyzed. database. Yes. And yep. so um, and so what this is is um, and so we get the cases that are attached to our community, anybody who has an address in Sunderland. Um, and so we get the actual, we get a test result. And the way we can find out if it's UMass or not is usually it'll say education, educational facility. Um, okay. Like I'll have a educational institution, it'll say. Um, I'm just looking at a, a spreadsheet. Uh, and lately, within the last couple of weeks, it, it isn't registering anything and we know that can't be true right. you know so we think is happening is that they're not uploading so so what we're trying to do is we're looking at the lab it's coming from and trying to uh, deduce from there because they use a certain lab okay so you can tell where the tests so are the coming public from health nurse and i are looking at it but i don't we don't want to say we don't have the actual information so i i yep. don't want to say but it's also, though, in this past week, do you think it's lower because uh, the students probably have left? Yeah, I believe they left Friday, right? Yeah. I think was no, their last so day. We are going to have uh, a little bit of a drop off. Actually, no. no. So they still there? The students in last day of classes, of classes was Friday. They weren't supposed to move out to Saturday and or Sunday or early this week. Okay. So, you, right, know, so. Uh, you know, what? so maybe we're not getting it or <laughs> you know, uh, but, but it doesn't really matter. We're still getting the positive cases. Right. No matter what, the positive cases come through Maven. And um, when the contact tracing is finished, we'll know, because we'll know who, where they've been and who they've seen. So that's not an issue. How does our case increase percentage um, align with the, you know what I mean? So in other words, if the state has gone up 12%, right. um, are we up within that same margin? Okay, yeah, I, so what I've done. Cause I think is, that'll help to give folks a perspective that, you know, like, okay, yeah. our cases are up, but everybody's, and we all kind of knew the spike was coming. So. Absolutely. So, um, so our percent positivity rate is 0.67. Mm -hmm. So that means of the total number of tests, how many of those tests are positive? Okay. So, you know, just over, just over, just over half percent. Yep. Um, and the state is 3.05%. So a little bit higher. So 3% of every, of, of the tests are positive. positive. Yep. Okay. Um, so we're still way below, you know, just way below. Right. In our area, Hadley is 0.54%. Okay. So we're above them. But, you know, so they're, um, you know, in the last 14 days, 
total positive cases were eight, ours were 11. You know, okay. it, so it's, it, it, and it okay. depends on what you had. Now, what killed us was a cluster. Yeah. Seven positive cases from one address. Yeah, one household. Yep, and one that's household. a lot in one household. A family of five, and then two relatives. It's a two-family house. Oh, yep. So take that away, and you got sick. I mean, you know, you you really. And then if you took that away, our percent positivity rate would be. Let me look. I did it. <laughs> um, 0.04. Okay. So it's good to keep that in perspective too, you know, you know, rather than looking at pure numbers. And we're, I think we're Jeff, we're green right now. I think we're right? green. The other thing to note is those individuals, everyone is going to be. So from November 1st to November 14th, we actually have 14 cases. Yeah. From November 15th to the 24th, 21st, we had six new cases. Okay, so we have 20 cases this month. Yep. And you can see that there's a big spike in that first well, half of the month. And then I asked this morning, uh, this afternoon, I asked the public health nurse, um, how many cases have we had since March 1st? Yeah. Our zero point. 49 cases. We've had 20 cases this month. So that, our cases, and I, I, you know what I was going to, we had a very long, long conversation and I was going to say, how many cases did we have last month? <laughs> you know, I would say our bulk of our cases are happening now. Right. Um, so what's, but when you look at what's happening, right? So we, we have these cases actually by Sunday, the 29th. All but two, four, five people are going to be off of the list. Okay. They're going to be done with their no, a time frame. Knock on wood. That's if nothing new comes in between yeah. now and Sunday. <laughs> right. We'll have five. So, I mean, this is a moving, breathing, you know, statistic. And that's something that needs to be understood. So when you said, how are things going? My immediate answer would be, actually, they're going pretty good. And Lori's was, Ugh, you know, <laughs> because it, and, and Lori's right and I'm right. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing is we're both right. Um, so what is 0.667%, you take one family away is actually, Point four percent, you know, so it, you know, um, what looks like we have a we have cases in the school. To me, is actually we have no school transmission. Isn't this amazing? Okay, we have two kids in Frontier, uh, family members. Yep. It did not generate in the school. And it did not go to anybody else. And that's in line with what you're hearing from the governor's uh, office too, when they've been talking about it, is that you know most of the cases, if anything, will get transmitted in uh -huh. rather than out of the schools. Which is why when we, and I'll, I'm jumping around, I know, but which is why when we had the four town board of health meeting last week, um, I advocated or I you know, spoke positively about ha going remote next week, even though I, um, I, I, I feel that school being open is a very safe place. And this just shows it. We just showed it in the past two weeks with having a positive um, elementary student in Sunderland with no school spread um, the pod system works, our mask system works, our going remote when we needed to works. Yep. Um, we had two positive students in 
keep in mind, this is all that one family, <laughs> two positive right. students in Frontier. The pod, you know, their system works. They have outdoor lunches. They have masks. Right. So, but what this is, is this is a home spread disease. And what do we have coming up this week? A home holiday. <laughs> well, that's what that's what I was going to say. This Where, is the time people yes. really are going to need to be cautious and careful because so people will be together. It was proposed that we go, even though I believe school is probably one of the safest places to be, um, when it was proposed, do we want to go remote next week? It's a good buffer. Right. It kind of forces quarantine <laughs> on at least the school people for at least 10 days because you've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you've got the five days and you got Saturday, Sunday again. You know, and I think that's a that's a you know prudent. Um but I'm I, I'm a public health, you know, is this an health emergency to shut the school, go to remote. No, I don't think we're there. Um, you know, I think our percent positive, our measures we're at, the the what we're doing, how we're handling things, we're doing it right. Um, you know, I I was I did listen to the board of health, the board of um, uh, I'm so sorry the school board meeting, and I heard from the school board members that they were under the impression that one positive case would close the school Oops. to remote. And I heard that by several board members and I don't know where they got that impression. And I, you know, I, cause I hadn't been to many school board meetings. Um, and I don't understand that impression because then why would we be doing pods? Why would we have ramped up all of the um, air handling systems why would we why did, would we have emptied the classrooms to make desks six feet and why would we be making them wear masks why wouldn't we have just made it comfortable for everybody and then at the first case shut the school for remote so i don't understand this pod system worked we sent all the second graders home yep. and no spread so I think that what they're doing, and this in our school is amazing, Sunderland Elementary. Between the, the our our nurse, this is her first year, and she is fantastic. That's good. Um, she's screening, she's calling the Board of Health, she's calling the public health nurse, she's calling the, you know, she's really on top of it. Um, the teachers are on top of the kids. They're, you know, and I'm in contact and you know, I called the, you know, the Board of Health meeting, an emergency meeting the last time, and our Board of Health met within minutes. <laughs> you know, I mean, we are, and we're looking at the cases, where they're coming from, who they're touching. Um, there was another thing that came up in the meeting with the um, school board. One of the members mentioned that school and I, I just wanted to bring this out in case anyone's listening. One of the members mentioned that uh, schools, she read that schools can be clusters in Massachusetts and that concerned me and I wanted to bring that up. So I went and I did some research and that is um, what the definition of a cluster in Massachusetts is two cases. Okay. Okay, so that can be pretty so, tiny depending on the size of your school. And so when I read I, that K through 12, since the beginning of this, since the beginning of the pandemic has had what you call 56 clusters with 116 cases. Um, and just to make you aware, as of now, households have had, have had 8,327 clusters with 17,000 cases. And so 56 clusters means two cases at yep. least, okay? And there's 1,842 schools in Massachusetts with 948,000 students. 
So that's a pretty good number when you really look at, step back cases. and look at it. 116 cases. Yep. So to say, you know, and I, I just think that there's a lot of emotion going on. Yep, I get that. And I and and you know what? And and it's 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 absolutely warranted. I, I am not downplaying emotion. Um, and I'm not downplaying fear because getting these getting this. <laughs> Yeah, so it's that time, Jeff. <laughs> um, you know, they're getting the disease, get, getting COVID for some people it is it can be serious. I mean, yep. you know, and then they're coming up with the, this long haul post COVID syndrome. Yes, like a lot of after effects that yes. they're really now learning about, right? You know, and then the other thing is you come up with uh, a lot of people are um, equating this to the uh, the shingles slash chicken pox thing, you know, everybody thought chicken pox was nothing until 20 years later, yep. shingles pops up and that's a devastating illness from the chicken pox. That's not fun. Yep. No. And so we don't know what's going to happen 20 years from now. But I think the so interesting this, thing, you know, excuse me, I'm just saying, so no, I'm right, not yeah. downplaying people's fears. Right. I just want to bring, you know, I'm in public health, you know, so I just want to bring the numbers in and a little perspective to it. Numbers, I can't, you know, I, you know, I, I'm in contact constantly with Darius Modesto. Every time a new number comes out, he calls the, the chairs of the Board of Health. Yeah, they've been doing a very good job over there of, of communicating you know. and everything with that. So, and I, you know, and I run the numbers and I, he's like, did you see it? Do you know what, you know, I mean, you know, every, every week and in between then too, we are in constant contact with the nurse manager and the superintendent. So just to, you know, so do you have any questions or? Do I have any any questions? I, I unloaded. I, un I, I didn't no, it's a, <laughs> well, and I think for me, sort of the unknown will be what happens at Thanksgiving. I think I heard this morning that they already had um, a million people um, accounted for in, in terms of air travel yeah. so far. So I think that's in my company. We actually had a meeting the other day um, after Wednesday. We're all working remotely again until the earliest the fifteenth of January. Now, we're, our company is technology based so we can do that but um and it's basically for the same thing because if somebody's at home during the holidays you get it you're gonna have to be quarantined for at least two weeks so that's kind of why they looked at that time frame so i think that will be a real interesting thing is to see you know how we how that pans out after the thanksgiving holiday yeah so. and it's not right and it's you know and there are a lot of people who are susceptible and i think that you know if people could just stay home, we canceled, we canceled. It's just the four of us, just my two girls, my husband yep. and I. We did the same thing. It's within the household only. So. Yeah. And it yep. stinks. It stinks. It I have a dad. <laughs> yep. Um, and I just brought it. I just today bought a turkey breast. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. But, you know, um, it's one holiday. But we're, you know, you do, we do whatever we have to do. Yep, you just get up and put your Christmas lights earlier, like yeah. folks are doing, I noticed. So. Yes. Um, so, I, I mean, I think, you know, um, I, I looked at the surrounding towns. I looked at the state. Um, we're pretty much in there. I mean, Deerfield, because they have such a large testing attributed to their town, their percent positivity is actually lower. It's 0.3%. Okay. Even, they have 10 positive cases, they had eight positive cases, but and I was like, why are there, why are they so low? Um, but they had, they had like 2,400 tests in the yeah. last 14 days. And I think a lot of that is that schools are getting, they're getting um, counted in the Deerfield residence. Oh, okay. Yep. So. All right. So that's about, that's about what I got. All right. Anything uh, from your end, Jeff? 
No, no. Okay. Um, have we had um, how about appointments in town hall? How's that been going? Good. I really haven't seen much of an uptick. Um, okay. Most people are still calling and and um, emailing or doing th things through the website. So. Okay. Um, so that's good. I, I think that everybody is seeing the same data statewide and is being responsible and, yeah. and doing as much as they can remotely. And, and we certainly appreciate it. So. Um, yep, we do. I greatly appreciate it. Just wear those masks. It's simple, you know, wash and, your it, hands. and wash your hands. Exactly. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, EMD. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy hey, Thanksgiving. same to you too. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Have we, um, is our sewer uh, petitioner hopped on yet? No? No, I just double checked my email and he, he said he would be on. And I gave him the correct information. So I don't know if you want to look over it or bring it back next week. Look over it. This is a same yeah, as well. Hi, right? Yep. And it's for, there's an application process. Yep. And we have, I assume, some input from Rich, uh, Brenda, and then George. Right. And if yes. we've got that in, if we got that input, you know, the desire, the desire is of the applicant. So we should be able to take action on the applicant's application. Right. Yeah, if we've got all the input, why make them wait? Yep. <clears throat> all right. I think you wanted the drawings. Yeah, I would think, right? So the, there should be a, an application that shows number of fixtures, bathrooms, sinks, etc. Yeah. Oh, am I not sharing that again? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. And in that, is it in keeping with the sewer bylaw? There you go. Okay. So this is a single family home? Looks like it, right? Sort of a single family residence. One laundry, one tub, one shower, two toilets. Yep. No disposals. And can we see the drawing? There we go. Can you give that a. I was going to say, can you rotate it? Yeah, rotate. Oh, there we go. Counterclockwise. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh. That's okay. Just one. keep going. There you go. Can you zoom in and scroll down? And so we're tying into an existing line on Old Amherst Road. Yes. And does it show the size of the line? Can you zoom in again? Excuse me. I don't it's believe just, it does. This is the landscape. Do you have the invert drawing? Hey, now. Oh, there you go. Nine. So four inch line. It references tied to the waste treatment plant or wastewater department. You scroll uh, to the right. Tom, you got a quarter of an inch to 12 feet. Is that about right? For your pitch. Quarter inch for uh, 10 feet. I'm sorry. Well, it should be 10 feet, quarter inch. Um, so estimated pitch is an inch, so it should be. Yeah, inch to 12. Be good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, that that's that that's really between the uh, rich rich and uh, yep. the petitioner. We're we're not we're not the engineer records on that. So correct. Yeah. And so, Jeff, there was a comment from 
George, George. sure there was efficient compaction in any of the road cut that happened? Yes, compaction at every foot of depth. Um, and then there was also a question about how uh, paving, how, right? How it would be repaved at the top. And um, we talked about the total paving uh, thickness equal to the existing road, correct? Correct, and, and, and the method that it would be done and, and the response from the petitioner was that um, if the hot asphalt plant is still running, they would do that. If not, they do a cold patch and then come back in the spring when the plant reopens and repatch it. We have that in writing? Uh, I have that in an email, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because comes the spring. So again, this is a single, single tie to our may our system at the end of old Amherst. And you've got a favorable from Rich and you've got conditions essentially from how we yeah. mm -hmm. so did we have the uh, do we have the uh, building permit also? I, I have not seen it. Probably make sure we get that right. Attach it. There's nothing is that is that the is that the house that's going in right on the corner there, Scott, by the brook? Yes. Yeah. It was interesting. You said you said it's a single family house, but there's signs in the window says for rent. Yeah. Well, I, I saw that as well, and I, I talked about single family, Tom, uh, only in like design. The basic definition, in this case here, by number of fixtures. If you look at the application, we've got a tub, a shower, two sinks, two bathrooms, no disposals. It's, a, it's footprint, I'm sure is it's it's a I'm positive it's a rental. So I'm right. not going to mix any words about that, but yep. it's not it's not a rental that the ZBA was a, approached oh earlier in the year, late last year, about eight units. This is looks like it's got the square feet of just one. That's what is it? Twenty one hundred square feet total. 1800 I think. 18 yeah, it was 1800, right? It was under 2000, I know that. But still for rent Tom, to your point. Well, that that's why I'd like to you know Scott, I and, and I'd like to postpone for a week. I'd like to see the plumbing permit and the building permit. Okay. I, and I mean, and, and again, I for me it's just because I I I noticed you you had said single family and it does look you know it does look like a single family from but one bathroom i i, I just like to see what sure Should, yeah it looks like there's two baths i would guess right one and a or half. one and a half maybe yeah. and, and, it, and again it says one shower one bathtub and again i i would i yeah. i don't think i i think it's consistent because we need to know for how we price it for how many units yep yep That's so fair. so it'd be nice to see the the plumbing permit and the building permit okay for, and, and my, I, I mean that's how i that's how i would look at it i, I just want to be consistent right and you get the whole package there right so yeah. jeff can we bring those two pieces added to it and it looks like Tom, on the sewer application, they've got a, a four-person occupancy, but you're right about the other two pieces of documentation. Yeah, I, and, and again, it, I just want to make sure that we're consistent, yep. that we're seeing, you, you know, and, and again, we just, you know, we just did something with the LaFord, the LaFords not too long ago, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's a certain way that we, you know, so we just, again, we just want to be consistent. Yep. There's a lot to recommend procedural consistency. So we can bring this back next week, Mr. Chair, with Jeff, those, those two pieces of added information. Yep. <laughs> All right. Tack that on our already building up the agenda for next week. Love it. There you go. All right. <clears throat> and then maybe they, if they need to, they can attend next week if they want to. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on the uh, sewer connection? No. Nope. All right. Thanks. Good input, Tom. All right.
great. So next up we have, um, actually, why don't we sort of combine the finance update and the discussion benchmark for employee wages, because it's really all wrapped together anyway. You can't have one without the other. <clears throat> sure. So I think that there are two things. You know, one, as you heard, um, there, there's a delay in, um, you know, originally we had wanted to have the classification hearing on November 2nd and it's right. been pushed back and pushed back and um, it, it's sounding like um, making good progress on it, um, but still not sure when we're going to be filing our Schedule A for our free cash certification. Um, so, I, you know, I, I guess I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention um, that that there are delays, and and I've been trying to work with FERCOG um, who provides our accounting services uh, on a solution um, for at least two and a half months, three months. Um, yeah. And I don't, it just, it doesn't seem like, I think progress is being made, but we're not catching up if that makes sense. We're sort of treading water. And, yeah. and I think that that's, um, not where we want to be. We want to be caught up and, and you know, there, there are, in addition to the delays, there are other things, um, you know, because we're not caught up, it's hard to get accurate figures uh, on certain things and, and answers to questions about, you know, how much, how much is left in the budget, how much, you know. Um, right. So, I, I, and, and the accountant is spending so much time trying to get these deadlines done that it's hard to get those other um, still important, but not quite as important information. Um, so working on alternative solutions to that. Um, and then in, in regards to the wage adjustment in COLAs, you know, I think that it, just a, a quick recap, um, for those watching at home, which is that it included in the fiscal year 21 budget were wage adjustments and COLAs for the non-union personnel, um, but they were not implemented at the time. And, and it was because of the fiscal uncertainty. We didn't, we really didn't know what the state budget was gonna look like. That's becoming a little clearer, um, but again, due to those delays and, and the inability to certify free cash, we, we really don't know exactly where local receipts are either, um, which is local receipts and tax revenue. Um, although we have a pretty good idea that most people have been paying their taxes. Which... Yep, I saw that the figure, so that's, that's encouraging. Yes, <clears throat> yep. yep. So, you know, but, but it, we do, I think, need to make a decision on that for income tax purposes. People need to report what their income was. And if we're going to pay retroactively to July 1st and the file, you know, um, sure the filing deadline isn't until April, but they're reporting on their, you know, their income as of December 31st, 2020. So we right. need to be able to give the, um, treasurer sufficient time to do the actual calculations, cut the checks before the end of the calendar year, if that there's going to be wage adjustments in COLAs. So how many pay cycles are there between now and the calendar year? Seeing if there's a calendar, um, I believe that there are two or three. Three, yeah. So we should have a decision next Soon. week. Yep. Right? I would so agree. I say, I, I say next week because making that decision tonight, to make that decision tonight, we would need to know what that plus up was yep. on the expense side of the ledger. Right. And that's for the non-union. We know that the police uh, were very clear and we agreed that they had, there's a reopening clause that if a raise did go through with the town, and I want to thank them for, you know, taking a, a wage freeze like our regular employees, uh, like our non-negotiated employees have, 
but they, to their credit, they recognize that, you know, if something did happen, we would reopen the contract and we would be looking for at least that uh, same value, if not greater. So we need those numbers before we can make a decision. You know, the, the board, the, the town meeting is the appropriating body. We appropriated the budget. We have to stay within the confines of the budget, right? That's just reality. The yep. board has in a position to, has put itself in a position to say yes or no based on revenues to release the said funds. We need to know what the values of those funds were both direct and indirect. And that's something we, you know, we have to have in front of us. If it's if it's a hundred thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, we still need to know. Yep. Right. So that's that's one piece. And if we could have that that kind of expense side of the ledger work done for next week, it would certainly help me help make a decision. I saw the spreadsheet you sent that was based on the most recent cherry sheet. Remember, the state doesn't have a budget yet. We have exactly. estimates, right? There's a, there's a $46 billion budget out there that's pretty close in both the House and the Senate. Uh, we haven't gone through, they have not gone through their, their budgetary process. And that still leaves us with a fair amount of uncertainty. So to appropriate money or to allocate appropriated money at this point, there's still a fair amount of uncertainty that said. So that's item number one. The second is the accounting piece, right? Yes. So two things going on here. So the accounting piece right now, if I heard Jeff correctly, we're not quite ready to do tax classifications. So we had to just postpone that. That's impactive. We're not quite caught with um, monthly book closures, general ledger, and we're not ready to submit Schedule A yet. And it's November. End of November. Yeah. yeah end of November. Right. So I guess, I guess the question is, having gone through this for a couple of years now, um, is, it, is it time to, and I, we you all know the same obstacles, right? <laughs> Municipal accounting is a challenge. Nobody knows it. It's, it's dinosaur talk. No one knows anything about it. You got to find the right person. Blah, blah, blah. So the question we have to ask is, do we have a decent, exactly, Tom. So <laughs> the question is, do, do we have a service that's being provided that meets our needs? And if not, where do we either hire someone or find another service? That is correct. There's only a couple of years in a row you can go missing again. You know, it, was, it wasn't too long ago that the DOR said, hey, you might not even be eligible if you don't submit. And this was in spring. That's right. not good. That's no, not we don't... good governance. And we can't do this on goodwill. We have to do it on good information. I think it might be time to start shopping. Well, we have a, we have a contract with the, with the, the, the COG and uh, is the contract ready to be renegotiated or is it something that has lapsed and we're just like chugging along based on old language? I believe it's lapsed and we're chugging okay. along. Okay. So, so is this the point where you put out an RF, I asked this to the board is this the point where we put out an RFQ for services or do we look at the model charge, charge the town administrator with looking at the model of hiring an accountant? It seems like an either or to me. Yep. Um, and I know we had talked about it at one point, but is there any chance of like sharing one with somebody? Is there another like position town? That's a great point, David. You know that might uh, be in a similar boat, and we could look at that. Because <clears throat> I think you're right. We, we've we've come to an inflection point. That's a good way to put we, it. And we got to make a decision. And we've had a pattern. No, no disrespect to any of the members of the Cog and, the, and their accounting staff. We okay. have a, we have a, there's a pattern of falling behind. You know, raising our cackles, and then things get done, or calling in. Um, calling in uh, extra services from another accounting firm to get us caught up. And then we fall into the same trap 18 months later. 
And frankly, yep. it's just not good governance, right? If, 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 if this is my last year, if I could go out on a legacy, it would be nice to have an accounting service that was solid. And every year the numbers were good. Well, and and it, numbers were reported. They're not always good. Yeah. <laughs> but they're there at least. Exactly. Yeah. And that's really, uh, honestly, when you think about it too, it's kind of a bedrock service because think of, uh, you just illustrated earlier, all the decisions that are hinged and waiting on some of those key milestones. And if we don't meet those, right. and, and I get it's been a, a tough year, but there are issues enveloped in this that have nothing to do with with, with the budget delays from COVID and things like that, so. Right. Yep. And again, it's tough. Municipal accounting is not the easiest thing in the world. It's a, it's a niche in the world of accounting and et cetera, et cetera. We've, we've, we've heard this story before. Chapter nine, turn the page. So if anybody's listening and they're contemplating career choices or career changes, municipal accounting, there's a definite need for it out there. You can make 40 grand a year for your whole career. That's right. <laughs> I, I say that tongue in cheek. <clears throat> Unless you're from a small town in Indiana and then you can embezzle 50 million. Right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And have a bunch of flashy uh, race horses or show right. horses. Unless you're weird to hear corner horses. Right. Ah, there you go. Actually, just priceless because anyway, that's a side bet. There's we a digress. Hole we can certainly go down. <laughs> So I, I would I would say, Mr. Chair, if I could, that yeah. you know, since we have we don't have a, we have a lapsed contract, we could put the cog on notice that we're going to put it out to rebid a, if that's a prerogative of the board, develop our scope of services if that's a prerogative of the board, and then uh, look at that versus talk to some of our peer communities and say, is there an opportunity for a shared full time position? Um, how, how, what would it look like? Let's take the re, let's take the step to re envision. No. I, I know where I know where I'm leaning personally, but I don't know. It could have been yeah. yeah, we've discussed this a thousand times at different yeah. meetings. So <laughs> that's right. Let's just, let's just get something in, in the works, would you please? Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks for Jeff. Me. Yeah. It's something worth being indulged on because like you said, it's good governance. And I, I kind of rather think that that's what we're aiming to do here. That's what we're supposed to do. Yep. All right. So hopefully next week we'll have some better news at least with our classification piece and then we can move forward from there, so. Well, I would say, uh, Mr. Chair, if we don't and we have to postpone classification again, that's just indicative of the quality of the service that's being delivered by our currently contracted service. I would, I would agree. It's pretty simple. You know, if, if it was someone mowing your lawn and did a lousy job, you'd fire them. Yep. So hopefully we won't be postponing next week, but at any rate, all right. So that leaves, unless we, unless we have anything else we want to talk on, on that topic. All right. Um, we have got uh, select board updates. I'm all set. All set. Uh, there was a Frontier Capital meeting scheduled for December 2nd that was postponed from last week. Oh. So December 2nd, uh, focus will be on the contract documents that were sent in on the uh, athletic fields and the track, right. uh, yep. as well as update cool work that has been done in the facility uh, during the time of, during the current time. Okay. And I think the only thing I have is I think we need to look at a scheduling another personnel committee meeting, right, Jeff? Yep. So we can go over that, um, that position description and everything. So, yep. <clears throat> I, yeah, I would say, well, we can, we can talk about it off the side. Let's just pick, you know, try to get a date rolling and try to get one in soon as we can, so we can talk about that. Because that, if that's all we've got for an agenda, we should be able to go through that reasonably quickly, so. Yep. Okay, all right. And with that, I turn it over to you, Jeff. It's too bad you didn't go to me first, because <laughs> it, it was a nice segue from I know. Uh, Scott's talking about mowing. Um, 
So we had a, yeah. a mandatory pre-bid meeting on Thursday that nobody showed up to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nobody uh, wants to mow? <laughs> uh, I, I think that we caught them in the middle of fall cleanups is what I heard. Yeah, okay. And they were very busy with that. So the current thinking is send out an addendum to those who requested uh, the IFB and um, do a mandatory pre-bid meeting in maybe the second week of December. December. Okay. Cleanups will be done and hopefully there won't be snow, but at least they can eyeball the, the size of the areas and, and get a feel for it. So, okay. oh, oh. room telling me to leave. You know, and I just, as you note that I have not got to get up once, yeah. which is odd. It's a reflector on the back of your head, Dave. It probably is. That, yeah. <laughs> the sensor is picking it up. That's right. Um, a little shine. <laughs> and the uh, the only other thing that I just wanted to mention is that the um, as a result from the as the state increasing uh, their renewable energy mix, um, all electric. Uh, supply costs are going to go up about a tenth of a penny per kilowatt hour. Um, so it is going to affect the the municipal aggregation customers as well as any other Eversource or uh, um, wherever you get your electricity from. It's a statewide mandate just to help pay for um, renewables in, in all electric supply. So just wanted to mention that. So we we get we have a, a slightly. Well, we have an enhanced responsibility knowing that we did the municipal aggregation, right? Yeah. But if people who did not participate or, or opted out, which was the term, mm -hmm. would still see the same increase because this is a regulatory mandate, not. So people who, are watch, people who are watching their electric bills will look at this and go, huh, I thought I bought blank or I defaulted into blank. Uh, but my rate increase, tenth of a penny or whatever it is, is straight from the state and it goes across everybody who provides in the Commonwealth. Correct. Okay, that's important to keep putting out there because you know we, we are, you know we we we're choosing to participate as a municipal aggregator, and our transparency has got to be much bigger and much broader than the state's transparency, which simply shows up on your electric bill. Right. Yep. Yep. Thank you. It's a shared baseline. Right. <clears throat> but the good news is that Eversource did come out with their winter rates and um, our aggregation costs are, are going to be below even with a, a higher percentage of green good. Um, energy. Oh. So. Anybody can still opt in if you're out there and you haven't participated yet. You can opt right. in and, and save some money. As, as yeah. a complete aside, and it has to do with that energy as well, in Trade Journal recently I read that 70 plus percent, so of all new generation <clears throat> in 2020, 70, meaning connected to the grid, things that generate power, 70 plus, and I forget, it, I don't want to do it injustice, it was between 73 and 76 percent, was renewable. Yeah, that's good. That's great. And that's that's na nationwide. That's a nice, that's a nice number to see. I mean, and, you know, that, that's a Again, burgeoning. That's new generation. Now, if you take, you know, 250, you know, gigawatts off the grid, you got to find that somehow. But it was interesting to hear that number put up there, and this was a that was a energy federal energy uh, stat. Mm. But anyway, sorry. It's good news. Well, <clears throat> it could be expensive news, but still, it's interesting to see how the, yep. how the industry is changing. It is, and, and and costs are getting driven down more too of wind and other things. So that's that's a good thing. We're reaching that critical parity point. So it was the <clears throat> same period, same periodical that I was reading about. The gas generation, but anyway, mm. that's a different discussion. It's not part yeah. of the agenda. Thank you for indulging. That's, that's right. All right. I think actually, with with that last indulgence, I think we've exhausted our regularly scheduled events. I have one more <laughs> indulgence, if that's the case. Yes, go for it. So this is from uh, Thomas Jefferson, and it's Jefferson to Adams, October 28, eighteen thirteen. 
and it says, the moral and physical condition of our citizens qualifies them to select the able and good for the direction of their government with a recurrence of elections at short, such short periods as will enable them to displace an unfaithful servant before the mischief he meditates may be irreversible, unquote. There you go. You have to look for that one, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I dog-eared I dog the page a couple weeks ago, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very fitting, I'd say. Yep. That's... 1828, as they were in their septuagenarian phases. And, and you know, I kind of like to just also thank everybody for participating in what turned out to be a, a huge turnout overall everywhere in terms of the election and a rather quiet and efficient one. Um, and I think that's, that's a testament, at least on that side of the election, to everybody's commitment to democracy. And, and to the ton of work that the electors and the clerk well, did. It was exactly really and different this year, and there was a lot of extra work. Exactly, and it was all new to them. And I think, and unfortunately, there are still some states still going at it, working away. So um, it, don't don't take the work that they do lightly. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, and it's very important. Correct. So, <clears throat> so our, I see our next meeting will be Monday the thirtieth, and we've got Thanksgiving in there. So I know. Uh, Please try it, folks, to you know, enjoy your Thanksgiving, but try to keep in mind the uh, current regulations and try to stay safe and everything. And I see a lot more Christmas lights out there already just coming home tonight. So it's, it's nice to see. Well, I'm thankful for this community and what they do. I would, yeah, I would, I would definitely second that. This is a fantastic community to live in. So, hey, Peter. Hey, David, you got any public comment time tonight? I, we do, sure. What do you got? Um, I had a suggestion and a couple of questions regarding your discussion about the finance update and oh. um, concerns about the accountant uh, uh, services that you're getting. Sure. Um, the suggestion would be that you start right away with figuring out what new different options would be. Yeah. Because my sense from my limited you know uh, contact with them um over the last three years has been uh that uh you know the service is not great and the service is not going to get better and you know if you've got the same uh situation yeah, and to, I think you're... Expect, to, to expect it to get better is is just sort of fooling yourself and um and i'd add to that that you know, I've been in a situation with the school administration where we've gone from uh, a business person that was quite totally different, but also left a lot to be desired to the initial change was to contracted services, which was better, but still not great, to then being able to find somebody that has been absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I would agree with that. And, right. it, and it has been such a benefit um to not only the school system but also the town benefits too because you know we've now got our act together with all this stuff and right. um so that i would suggest that you you know get the ball rolling on on trying to come up with a with a different and hopefully much better plan to get these services because you know i'll, I'll follow that up with a couple of questions and I'm guessing from what it sounds like, you don't really know yet. I mean, what percent do we have like year end numbers for back FY20 for, you know, what our local receipts were, what our tax collections were, all this sort of stuff. We have all those numbers or are we still waiting for some of that? We're still waiting for some of them, right? Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. And, and that should be in August. Uh, right. Because usually right. October is when we're looking at our free cash numbers, right? So, right. So, you know, do we have do we have a sense of of you know we had tax bills due October one? What have our collections been on those? You know how much are we how much are we coming up short? I mean these are things. Even if you just know some of these numbers, you can start to make intelligent decisions. I you think know, make intelligent guesses about where your finances are going. I think we don't we, have those. I'm assuming. Do we? I did see a, a collection number, right, Jeff? Was it it's somewhere on ninety six percent or something? Uh, yeah, that's what we saw. So okay. Okay, so if it's ninety-six percent, 
That's a pretty good number. It is, yeah. And that, really that at least gave me a little comfort when I That's saw that. That's a real good number. If I look at, you know, you're talking about the whole revenue side of the current year budget, okay? And you look at the, at the state budget and you could say, yep, we don't have a state budget yet. But at this point, we got the governor, the House, and the Senate all using the same numbers for local aid. Sort of. Yeah. Pretty darn close. It's just close, but they're, they're different. Yeah, but they're only like a couple, th for Sunderland, they're only like a couple thousand bucks different. Right. It's not, yeah. Okay. Don't really look one, at it that way. Yeah. The only thing I know is that you never, it, it used to be there were certain things that you could take to the bank the last five years, right, Scott? The last yep. five, six years, it, every you, you could have a budget and all of a sudden the entire thing changes. So I, I'm, I'm not arguing with you, but I'm saying that so far at this point, I feel a lot, I feel at least a whole lot better than I felt about it two months ago, six months ago. That's true. Okay. Because we built into our budget, if I'm not correct, significant reductions in both uh, Chapter 78 and general government aid. Right. We tried to be conservative about it. Right. So, um, you know, and if the other, now obviously there are a lot of local receipts, the whole, you know, the whole miscellaneous package of stuff. Um, the, you know, once you had a, a handle on that number, which like I'm saying you should have by now, but obviously that's a problem. Um, you know, then you could start to get some certainty about, you know, where your, where your finances are. So right. well, I sort of, I mean, I'm sort of disappointed to, that, that it's, you know, it's, it's already way late and it's, or, and it's still not done. So I guess, you know, we, we share that with you, find, find, a, <laughs> find a plan B or something. Cause it's worth it. Yeah. I think Jeff's got the enviable task of doing that. <laughs> if I could, Mr. Chair, to, to yeah point, you know, we've had not quite a decade, but nearing it of contracted service from the COG. And um, whether it's contracted, we, we know what doesn't work, right? Yep. We live through what doesn't work. So that's a pretty easy document to generate. Here are all the things that we don't want to happen. Right. And exactly. The rest, the rest of it's pretty DOR driven, right? There is a municipal calendar. Uh, so exactly. You're supposed to follow it. So if we know what that calendar is, it should be pretty easy to write either a scope of services for a contracted service, or as Peter said, and as I said earlier, you know, maybe it's time to look at an individual and simply hire an accountant. That yeah. may be easier said than done, but that may be the direction that we have to go. And you'll have to go to town meeting with a straight face and say, hey, here's a salary and a head count for a reason. Yep. And you may not see it because you show up once a year or you're lightly plugged into the budget process, right? I get that. But it's, it's just miserable to go through this time of year with all this uncertainty. Right. And, and the, the, just the way it is. And there's questions that get asked that we can't, you know, give answers to yet. And it's, it's, it's frustrating. Governance. It's absolutely not good governance. Yep, I would agree. Okay, thanks, David. Yeah, no. I, so I think you'll find lots of agreement with your um, uh, with your position there, Peter. So, <clears throat> thanks. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So I think um, other than that, I think that's our that's all we have for our public comment. I think uh, we're probably about done for this week. I second. All right. All those in favor of adjourning at. Uh, 742. Aye. 742. Yep. Aye. 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 All right. Thank Thanks. You. And have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, folks.